Hello, everyone. This is uh, John Carroll with Forward Talk, and I'm here with my beautiful and talented, amazing wife, Lindsay. <clears throat> yes. And um, before we get started, I just want to remind you to hit that subscribe button. Also hit the notification bell and feel free to leave any comments in the comments section as you are uh, watching through this video. Also, um, there will be links in the show notes for you to partner with us financially for our new church plant. We will have the um, information for you to, to donate electronically with PayPal to Center of Restoration Church. And or if you want to uh, support um, us, uh, my, my ministry, as we are uh, planting this church, I will have the uh, <clears throat> cash app and PayPal information for, for Word of Truth. And uh, we will appreciate any contributions you give either to our ministry or to the church. Mm -hmm. It will be a tremendous blessing, and we pray that God will bless you for your generosity. Well, what we're talking about today is, um, what we're going to talk about today is our church plant, and particularly the, the vision of what we want to see God do and accomplish through, uh, through our church. Uh, the name of our church is Center of Restoration. We have... Um, we, church. Core Church, that's right. Uh, we have been going for about four months, and the Lord has been uh, blessing and sending people, and we're thankful for that. We have, God has given us some really amazing people uh, over the last few months, and we're, we're thankful for each and every one of them. But uh, Lindsay and I were uh, praying over, talking over what we were going to, to call our church plant, and when she said the phrase center of restoration, it was, uh, it was something that immediately resonated in my spirit as the uh, core of what our vision uh, is for, for starting this church. And that is creating a church culture where restoration can happen, creating a church culture where uh, restoration is the vision of the church from the leadership mm -hmm. all the way all the way throughout every stage and level of, of the church culture and the congregation where the vision for everything that we do is restoration, mm -hmm. restoration of people to their, to their relationship with God, restoration of people to their relationship with others. That is the, the core of the gospel is, is reconciliation and restoration. In fact, Paul tells us in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, to which God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. Mm -hmm. And he has also given to us that ministry of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. So not only did God reconcile in and through Christ in the incarnation and on the cross, but that ministry and work of re reconciliation has to be go ongoing through us as the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what we are seeking to do. And not every church culture, not every church is a, is a place of restoration. Not every church is a center of restoration. There are churches where um, Phariseeism and legalism and judgmentalism run heavy throughout the culture of the church. And, and um, restoration is not just something that's a part of who they are. If people don't fit into their mold, if people don't fit into their comfort zone, uh, then they, they alienate them in some way. They find a way to, to push them out. But that's not the core of the gospel. That's not the core of the New Testament. And it's certainly not the core of what we are seeking to do with Center of, of Restoration. And both Lindsay and I, our stories, our lives, um, we, we know by personal experience that not every place is a place where um, people are open to, to restoration. And God has put this in our spirits and in our heart. Lindsay, won't you take the take a little bit of time and, and talk about it from your perspective? Yeah, so for many years, I, um, I realized that I was afraid of church. I was afraid of um, church culture, I should say. Um, I, when I, especially after I was going through things, when I was going through things, I tend to, tended to hide my, any, any insecurities I had with what was going on in my life, any kind of, 
um, issues, anything that was going through, because I was afraid to, you know, basically come clean about stuff to people in the church. And um, I realized, you know, after going through the stuff, I realized that my fear wasn't of God, it was of church. And for so many years, I considered it being, you know, like God's going to get me for this or God's going to get me for that. And, you know, after looking back now, I realized it wasn't God at all. I didn't ever like really place that on God. I really was afraid of the church people actually. And so I wasn't afraid of the backlash that God was going to give because I knew there was a message of grace and mercy from him, but it was, if I, you know, if when this comes out or when this goes on, it's going to blow up and I know how I'm going to get treated. And, you know, the sad thing is, is I was, you know, how, exactly how I felt about what was going to happen when I kept things hid. And then when it finally, everything came ahead and it all felt like it just blew up. And sadly I was, it was exactly actually probably worse than I thought it was going to be. And so I, um, you know, the way I was treated in the church from the church culture that I was in, it was not what anybody should ever have to deal with. So when, um, he, he and I were talking about starting a church, I told him that, um, this place has to be a place where people can come and they can, you know, go through life, which, you know, sadly is when people go through life, they're not, they're not, nobody's perfect. Nobody's at all going to do everything right. But even when they don't, it's not their fault. And when it's not their issue that they're going through and they being, a, you know, having to go through it, that it shouldn't, it should be where we, as a church, we pull them under and we say, Hey, you know what? You're going through some things. I know maybe you did it. Maybe you're the one that did it. Maybe you're not the one that did it, but when we go to church, we should have um, somebody there that we can lean on and that we, yeah. you know, and especially the leadership, especially um, the ones that are helping make the place go. And they have to be loving and caring. And no matter what somebody goes through, you can't just say, you know what? I don't like what you're going through. You're not my picture perfect that, you know, everything's not picture perfect. So I don't want to push you away. And that's what, that's sadly what I went, what we went through. And so, um, and then what she's talking about, it was not anything sinful on her part. It was just something that was divorce. less than it was. So yeah. A, a divorce. A divorce and our, you know, I understand it's not always everybody's, you know, I didn't get married to get divorced. So it was never something that I thought I would ever have to go through. And when I did, and when I was going through things that led up to the divorce, I, even if it wasn't all my fault, or if it wasn't, you know, it was embarrassing to say I was going through things and because church, it didn't fit the, the, yeah. the, the picture perfect mold. of mold. And of what? So when, when we decided to do this, I said, we have to let people know that if they fall, if they fail, if they have anything they're going through, they don't have to be afraid to come to church and in live life still, even though in, in common, right. I don't want people to feel like they have to, they can't come to church because if they do, they're going to be attacked and condemned and ridiculed. And I mean, it, you know, told, you know, and sadly it's for me, it was hard. Yeah. People <laughs> so, should, people shouldn't have to overcome church to get the guy. Yeah, and that's where I, after we, I went through some stuff, the stuff, I decided, I said, I don't know if I can do this church life anymore. I can't do, you know, and then I had to get in my head that it's not God. It is the church culture that I was a part of. And it, it's just, you know, I can't do that again. So when we did this, I said, it has to, everything has to be different. It can't be that same thing over again. It can't be the same cycle. It has so, to be a different kind of church culture where the gospel grace the cross is that yeah and this, what we what who we are at the church when they come to church is a glimpse of who jesus is and not yeah not these judgmental oh you messed up so let's figure out how to push you out let's yeah. figure out what we can do to get you out of our picture that's not perfect and so you know at center of restoration it, it, we the culture that we're setting and it's something that's not going to be like changed is people can come in and they can 
feel loved, cared for. It doesn't matter where you're at in life, who, what's going on in your life, what you, you know, you're doing what, you know, cause God, he himself, he's not, we have to, that's where we, he's not going to judge you and treat you bad because of what you're going through. He's a good, good father. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of grace, the grace of God, the grace of Christ, the love of Christ mm -hmm. has to be something that is manifest through his body, the church. Yeah. And uh, when people come into our church, no matter what their past is, no matter what their background is, no matter what their story is, we uh, as a couple, as the pastor and pastor's wife, are, are going to always be transparent about our story because mm -hmm. when people come in, we don't want them to think and feel like that nobody here understands their struggle. Mm -hmm. Nobody here understands what they're going through. We might not have ever went through what somebody has gone through, but we understand that when we've gone, that we've gone through things and we have had to overcome things and we know what we needed when we were going through it. Yes. And so that's what center of restoration. We is want about. to be the kind of church that we wish we could we have had. had. Yeah. When we were going through things and you know, no matter what somebody's going through in life, it's never too far from being able to be restored. And, yeah. um, you know, you're not too far from God, no matter where you are, because he, he created us to be his, no matter what we what we do and yes sin is sin but when you have a church culture that's going to say you know what yes you've messed up yes you've got sin in your life but we're here to preach what the bible says and it starts from the heart towards to the outside instead of it being straighten up to to come to church you have to straighten up today and you're then you can you know then you can attend here it's not that's not how center of restoration is no, we want people to be able to come and present their authentic life and story to both God and the church mm -hmm. and, and feel comfortable knowing that, that this is a place that no matter where I am right now in life, this is a place that I can come and freely worship God, freely find a restored relationship with God and other people. And, and instead of judging and criticizing me for where I am, they're going to come alongside me, love me, help me in my journey. And then in that process, God is going to change me and bring me to the place that he wants me to, to be. And I'm not going to be forced to fit into some artificial mold that, that someone has created that if I don't fit in that mold, then I'm not accepted. And, um, and because of that, God has, God has sent us some amazing people to our church with some amazing stories. I think almost everybody in our church has some kind of, of, of traumatic story that they could tell a testimony of where God has, has brought them from. And it makes for a powerful atmosphere of the gospel that when people come in that, that they know, Hey, I'm surrounded by imperfect people that God has done some incredible things uh, in their lives. And this is a place where I can grow. My family can grow that, that we can develop um, into what, what, what God wants us to be and what God has called us to be. Mm -hmm. Every story, every story I have ever taught my children or taught any, any, anybody or like learned or read about myself comes from a, a lot. Most of them come from a, they started at this position where, you know, most people would say mm, they can't be used. They are not, yeah. they're not, they're not up to par. And then God used them yeah. to do it instead of the ones that sat here and said, Oh, they're not qualified. They're not. And so for me, that's, you know, teaching my children and teaching kids, you know, it's, you know, you don't, that's God takes you from your, where you feel like you're low and he brings you higher yeah. and the people that are going to sit back and, you know, bad mouth it. They're the ones that don't get used because, you know, they, they, you just, you don't. God desires and God desires. God desires. <laughs> he delights. I was going to say desires and delights and it came out as desires. That's a pretty cool word though. <laughs> uh, God delights in using the underdog. God delights in using people that nobody else 
thinks is qualified to be used. And I don't feel qualified to be used. I would have been like, why would he use her? You know, yeah. I, I mean, I can't say I've never ever thought that way, but now I've realized after going through things and seeing, and then actually just learning that God uses whoever he wants, not whoever it's we think is qualified. Just like, just like David, when none of his father, none of his brothers, when the prophet came looking to anoint the king over Israel, none of his brothers, his father, anybody thought David was the one that God could possibly be looking for. In fact, they didn't even bring him out into the lineup. The man of God had to say, there's got to be another, another son around here somewhere because I know God said he's coming from Jesse's house, yet yeah, none of these boys here are the ones that God has called, and they had to go get David because no one believed that David could possibly be the one that God was choosing, and yet David was exactly who God was choosing because, as, as the Bible says, that man looks upon the outward appearance, but God looks upon the heart, mm -hmm. and who God uses has nothing to do with with how other people see them. It's their heart before God. And so uh, it's amazing what God has been doing mm -hmm. in our church, and we're believing him to continue to do great things. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you are anywhere near the Borden, uh, Boardman Youngstown area, Center of Restoration is the church for you. Center of Restoration is a place where no matter how bad you've been hurt by church, no matter how bad you've been hurt by uh, life. life, whatever it is, Center of Restoration is the is the church where you can come, and 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 uh, God will absolutely. I believe if you come, God will absolutely change your perspective mm -hmm. on the church, change your perspective on what it means to belong to a, a local church. And, and and with that, you'll come and you'll. You know, we know who we needed when we were going through things, and that's who we want to be for people. Yeah. And we, I know we have a group of people that want to be that for people. Yeah. And then you come, you get what you need from God, and then you can be that to someone return. else in we return. Can cycle this all around. So yes. yes. So not only will it be a center of restoration, but you're going to create a cycle of restoration. Yes. Core, C O R. Not only a center of restoration, we just but, keep coming up with more and more, yeah. <laughs> more and more things that we. <laughs> so, the the term we did we use the term uh, C O R, or the center of restoration, so we could use core like for all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. You know, core group, core church, mm -hmm. um, core doctrine. So because everything comes from the heart instead yeah. of instead of looking at the outside of somebody, we want people to see the inside of them. And know that they have to be restored from the inside out. Yeah. So we that's exactly it became right. a whole we sat there and discussed it and it just kept everything just kept going. And we're like, this is perfect. <laughs> I love it. And uh unfortunately, my my computer was not charged. And so we're down to no charging. <laughs> came down to we're down to three percent. Hey, this is not gonna be the last time her and I are going to have these similar type conversations. Um, we're, we're going to do this periodically, hopefully like once a month, we will sit down together and mix in conversations from her and I, as well as other interviews that I will do. Um, once again, hit that, uh, subscribe button, hit the notification bell. Come see us at church. Come see us at church. Absolutely. Come see we us at praying, church. We are moving and hoping God's going to get us a building. Yes, that's right. Pray for us a building. We're gonna have to buy. We have to get two rooms now. We can't just take one room. Yep. We're we're blowing out the. We're gonna have to blow out the wall. <laughs> exactly. At the, at the center, or whatever. It's the Holiday Inn. Holiday Inn. The conference center. The Holiday Inn. Center, center, Holiday Inn yeah. <laughs> and so, <laughs> hey, we love you. We we believe that God wants to do something amazing in your life. Come see us at at Core we Church. Got some awesome people. We have a lot of kids. We have mm -hmm. uh, yep. a lot of families. So. This is a place for you and your family. Yeah. We're fun. Yeah, we are. Absolutely. Fun and loving and caring. That's right. <laughs> All right. Have a great day. Thank you for taking the opportunity to watch this episode. Gone. Yes. <laughs> That's amazing. And hey, real quick before. Oh, you want to see Calvin? Yeah, we're going to introduce he you to. He was sneak sleeping and he just waking up. He might be a little there. fussy. He might give you a mean look. 
me get you if you want to see them on a screen. And C-O-R, this is a uh, child of restoration right here. Oh. Hey, buddy. Hey, you want to hey, hey, get introduced on Forward Talk? <gasps> <laughs> he's, he's not just waking up, but I he's was, like, I'm just waking up and you're putting me on camera. He, hey, this is our buddy Calvin. Calvin, say hello. Hey, he's a tired. Mm. All right, up. all right. God bless you. We love say you. Hi. Come see Calvin at church. Yeah, see, I'm, he's really, I worship. He's really I'm a worshiper. Fun. I clap my hands. Sometimes I love you can to watch Brother Matt play the drums. Sometimes that uh, you can even hear me clapping on the live stream. I, I clap yeah. so loud. Yeah, he does me. Mm -hmm. All right. God bless. Come see us at church. <laughs>